This program shows drugs being made, sold, and used. It features graphic content that may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello. 4 p.m., Los Angeles. A drug deal is going down. All right, text me the address. All right, check it out. I just got an order in from an A-list actor who has a premiere tonight. We're about to do a red carpet event. You're gonna see how Hollywood does it, baby. Celebrity style, all white, pimped out. Cocaine is the name. LA gang member, Homie, deals coat to some of the world's most famous faces. You want a quarter pound of the purest cocaine money can buy. You can instantly even feel it. It'll get your fingers numb, It'll make you gag and make your whole face numb. Okay. Homie's first move is to visit the stash house. What's up, G? That he shares with his fellow gangbanging dealers. You got the scale over there? My client needs a baby brick. And I know most of his brick is gonna be right here. Look at this piece. He's gonna pay $4,800 for that. With so much money at stake, Homie's taking no chances. White gold. It's not always yellow. In the USA, over four million people regularly use cocaine. This powerful stimulant is worth more than gold. And every year, Americans spend over $37 billion on the drug. Los Angeles, California is one of the USA's largest coke markets. You know what's out there? Millions and millions of dollars from thousands and thousands of users. <laughs> Today, homie's dealing to a world-famous actor. I gotta go to the red carpet right now, bro. Yeah, another movie for me. His coke is supplied by his gang on credit. I've known my suppliers as far back as my childhood. So we're very close knit. I don't ever pay for anything up front. I have a certain amount I have to work with and distribute weekly, and I pay it off as I get it. Homie makes $200 on every ounce. Tonight's deal is worth big money. Dropping off four ounces. So I'll be walking away with $800 for myself, with nothing out of my pocket other than gas and my time. And that's how I like to work it. But to get paid, homie must deliver the coke without getting busted. I don't know what's going on here. We have a lot of police presence here. The last thing we need to do is get pulled over. The location of tonight's deal is super high risk. Who in the hell would tell you to do a deal in a red carpet, for God's sakes? Only a celebrity. And I'm supposed to hand him his package on the red carpet in front of everybody on the planet, and God knows what he's gonna do with it. He's buying a little more than just enough for his head. Cocaine has been linked to the deaths of a number of Hollywood icons. From River Phoenix to Whitney Houston. And most recently, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I don't use coke. No, I don't. That will only make you a liability. And there's no room for any liabilities in this field. And I'm not there to be their friend. So I'm not there to be life of the party. I basically handle what I have to handle and take off. This is what he chose to do, not me. This is his meeting spot. I would have preferred to meet him at his home. My adrenaline is pumping right now. Homie's first challenge is to get into tonight's premiere. Where are the tickets at, over there? Are you buying tickets? No, dear, I'm on a guest list. I'm one of the actors in the film. Using a prearranged false name, Homie is in. I just got my ticket. Now I'm gonna give it to him, handle my business, and then I'm gonna expect him to handle his business. 
Now Homie needs to find the buyer and get rid of the coke quickly. So now I gotta run around and look for this actor. So I don't know if it's this way or up there. But yikes. In front of a crowd, the deal needs to be subtle. With one quick movement, the coat changes hands. It went good. It went good. Tomorrow he deposits what he has to deposit uh, in my account, and then we're good to go. Forty-eight hundred bucks. That's why we're here in L.A. Do it big, y'all. Homie's coke is produced over 4,500 miles away in the remote lawless valleys of the Varane region of Peru. Here, cocaine starts life as coca leaves, worth just $3 a kilo. This valley is the coca capital of the world. Peasant farmers grow over 47,000 tons every year. Hay peligro este si cultivamos sin la coca siempre la ley nos persigue. Los enemigos son la ley. Today, Jose and his family plan to reap many months of hard work. Lo que vamos a hacer este trabajo hacer la cosecha de coca. Vamos a marchar. They know the police could swoop in at any moment. Enemigos de la coca, la ley viene, nos prohíbe. Siempre tenemos que estar al tanto, a la vigilancia. Vamos a los jóvenes, vamos muchachos. Jose risks growing coca because it's 20 times more profitable than legal crops. Si cultivamos la coca, de esa manera sustentar las necesidades de la familia. Acá en Bray tenemos un promedio de 18.000 propietarios. Esa cantidad estamos produciendo el cultivo de la coca. But the family will only make money if they can avoid getting busted. Ya vamos, rápido. The consequences would be catastrophic. Peru's police destroy illegal crops wherever they find them. They torch the makeshift labs used to process the coca leaves. And arrest those suspected of cocaine production. But today, Jose is lucky. The harvest is a success. And he's made cocaine's base material, cocaine paste. The value has now shot up from $3 a kilo for leaves to $900 a kilo for paste. Jose is 13 kilos, but the family won't get a penny unless they can get it to market. The problem is to get it from the Bray to another place. They transport it with more speed. The Coke's buyer is 120 miles away, across a valley full of cops and thieves. There are many rappers there. Anza por un kilo y te pueden matar. Y es un problema grande para nosotros. También cuidarse mucho de la policía, la policía antinarcótica que está por todos sitios. Carlos will make the coke run with his brother, who's just 12. Todos mis amigos tienen miedo. ¿Qué tal me matan? For his part, Carlos will make $900, cash he needs to support his wife and child. The brothers set off. Ahead are three days of hills, 
forests and danger. From the center of the Vrame region, the brothers must travel 120 miles west through treacherous jungle terrain to reach their cocaine buyer. No podemos así avanzar a, así por caminar, por caminar. Tenemos que a un lugar, a un monte, de vigilar. Apúrate. The brothers want to stay off the roads and out of sight, but there's a river in their path, and the only way to cross it is by bridge. Hay gente en que ellos son los que comunican a la policía. Expone mi peligro encubierto, no sabes quién es. Has puede ser una señora, un anciano. No, no sabes cómo está la policía. Today the brothers have walked 40 miles. But as night falls, they can't afford to relax. Nos hacemos tarde, descansamos en una choza y siempre tenemos que ocultar eso. Vamos por ahí al monte, hay que ocultar. Carlos and Pablo hide the coke to prevent police busting them in their sleep. Y pero tienen que esconder la droga con árboles que tiene hueco. And to stop thieves robbing them. Porque nadie sabe, puede haber rateros, como le dije. Nos agarran, nos matan, te llevan nuestro drogo. Aunque venga, te entiendes, va a ser, no tenemos nada, están limpios y se van también sin llevar nada. Por eso siempre ocultamos. ¿eh? Tampoco no puedo arriesgar tan su vida ¿no? de mi hermano. Ya acabamos de dormir. Tenemos que descansar, ¿no? estamos cansados. Ya acabamos de dormir. Over the next 40 hours, the brothers cover 70 miles of jungle. The buyer is now close. The race is on to get to the buyer in time. But suddenly, there's a noise. A vehicle is approaching. And it could be a threat. Brothers Pablo and Carlos are dodging police and thieves on a coke run that could kill them. They've heard a noise and taken cover. But it's only a farmer. The brothers now have less than an hour to reach their buyer. Finally, Pablo and Carlos spot him. Cuando nosotros llegamos, de eso hay que tener mucho cuidado. No debemos demorar mucho porque la policía, como sabes, está por todas partes. The brothers receive the money that will keep their family going until they have to make the next coke run. The cocaine paste has just entered the supply chain of a Peruvian drug cartel. Having made it out of the jungle, 
paste is refined into cocaine, and its value rises from $900 to $1,300 a kilo. The next stage is to get it out of the country. Yo le recomendaría que no, no se meta en este trabajo, porque este trabajo es, solamente trae problemas, violencias. Para mí es muy difícil de dejar, o sea que si yo voy, también me matan. Manuel's in charge of transporting his cartel's coke out of the Vrain region. Trabajar en ese de este, llevar este producto de acá a otro sitio de 100 y 100 mil dólares. Te ganas en un mes y no es fácil. Today, he needs to move over 800 kilos to an airfield due north. Los choferes ganan dependiendo la cantidad, 2,000 a 3,000 dólares por viaje. Hay otros que tienen su carro, un camión, ahí tienen sus, sus autos. O sea que en un, un camión dice puede llevar 200, 300 kilos. Such a huge shipment of coke is a target for those on both sides of the law. Cuando estás transitando, ahí te pueden agarrar la ley o los rateros, entonces... It's even a temptation for Manuel's drivers. Tienes que tener confianza con la gente. Por decir, se escapan cuando uno está transportando, ahí lo matan. Porque hay mucha violencia en este tipo de trabajo. Hay uno cuando tiene plata, siempre hay problemas. Today's journey passes without problems. The coke has made it to an airfield in the Pitches Palcazu area of central Peru. But in the region's center, Constitución City, Peruvian police are on the move. Hoy día se va por una pista clandestina que es utilizada para vuelos ilegales con transporte de drogas. De tal manera que inhabiliten la pista. Colonel Zanabria's unit is trained to kill. Las aeronaves tienen artilleros con ametralladoras M60 para la cobertura aérea y todo el personal tiene fusiles que hacen la cobertura inmediata. 20 tons of coke are flown out of this valley every month. The terrain is well suited for illegal airfields. As they approach today's target, the helicopters hug the terrain to reduce the risk of locals spotting them. Pues las comunidades al recibir un dinero, con eso conllevan a ser simpatizantes de los traficantes y le dan información sobre las posibles operaciones que la policía puede hacer para interceptar las avionetas. The coke traffickers airfield is now directly below. La primera aeronave al ingresar, eh, la escuadra se despliega y asegura toda la pista. The unit has no idea who or what is waiting for them. Colonel Zanabria and his men could come under fire at any moment. Peru's police have just landed on a coke trafficker's jungle airfield. A burnt out plane is the only sign of the traffickers. But that could change at any moment. Colonel Zanabria sets up his perimeter guard. La población ha visto el ingreso de los de las aeronaves y ya sabe que vamos a destruir la pista. Eso las operaciones tienen que hacerse en el menor tiempo posible. The plan 
is to blow huge craters in the airfield's earth and timber runway. Tú ves aquí están las huellas cómo pasan. Esas son las huellas de lo que el uso que se le está dando a la pista. Adelante, adelante, Capu. The unit buries hundreds of kilos of explosives. Amfo. Amfo es un explosivo craterizador para hacer hueco. Un cráter. Esto es dinamita. Ya, esto va a hacer que todo esto que está acá se active. Así como está, pero pegado para la pared. Pegado para la pared. Re contra peligroso. The airfield is now rigged to blow. El cordón amarillo es detonante. En el otro hoyo son explosivos. Fuego en el hoyo. Fuego en el hoyo. Repite. Danos la orden. Estamos a la espera. The team is ready to take to the air. Ya pelado. Prendido. With the fuse lit. The countdown is on. 5 but with countless other active airstrips in this region, the coke traffickers still have multiple export options. And one plane has just taken off. Having got past the police and into the air, the value of the coke on board has soared from $1,300 to $10,000 a kilo. From Peru, it's headed north to Central America. But the traffickers can't count on it getting there because U.S. Customs and Border Protection have received a tip-off. And a high-tech P-3 surveillance plane has been scrambled to intercept. Some kind of twin engine aircraft, we think, a, some sort of Piper. They can typically carry out yeah, about 800 kilos, so several million dollars worth of coke. has a range of 5,000 miles, allowing it to find and follow drug planes over vast areas. Its four-bladed turboprops are much quieter than jet engines, and operating at night, the airframe is nearly invisible. Tonight, the crew's first challenge is to find the coke trafficker's plane. All they know is that it's over Venezuela but they have state-of-the-art technology, three advanced radar systems, and a camera so powerful, it could read the name on a vessel's stern from the air. Bingo. Suddenly, the trafficker's plane is in their sights. You want to give me some coffee and popcorn? What do you got for speed on him? 211 miles. OK, and he's hauling. The pilot turns into close pursuit. The P-3 needs to be near enough to track the plane. I don't want to get too far behind this guy. But not so close that they get spotted. We ought to accelerate. He's pretty far away from us. This guy's yeah. kicking a The crew must follow the plane until it lands. Its destination could be thousands of miles away. Stay covert behind him, track him, let everybody know where he's at. We'll 
see what happens. This is the kind of stuff this plane was designed to do. But it's not going to be easy. Four hours in, and there's a problem. Aww. Surely he's not going to fly it that way. They're up and nose to this. Flying in total darkness, the P-3 tracks the plane through the storm. After an hour of extreme turbulence, the weather subsides. Uh, I think we're out of it finally. Sweet. But 25 minutes later, there's another even bigger problem. He's turning. Oops. Target has turned. Oh, he turned around again. He's just turning. He's going to go across Belize. They don't have permission to fly over Belize's airspace. The P-3 can't follow. I don't want to lose this guy. We lost lock. I'm recycling the radar. He seems to have disappeared. What the hell? U.S. Customs has lost contact with the coke plane they're tracking. You ought to be able to get him here, guys. Yeah, I'm looking for him. Based on the plane's last known course, the crew are gambling that is headed for Guatemala. You should be able to get him on the radar if he's there. I don't got a, I don't got anything. Oh, look at that shit right now. Oh, that's low. Honey, we got lucky. It's not luck. It's nice work, dude. He's passing into Guatemala, and I got him. See if we can lock that bad boy up. Stay, stay with him while we can now. Okay. The coke bust is back on, and local police helicopters are scrambled. I'm gonna recommend the helicopters turn west to follow this guy. But then, after another hour of pursuit, the plane takes an evasive turn to lose any potential tails. How's he doing? I don't know. It looks like he's gonna be on the border of Mexico and Guatemala. The P-3 has the range to follow the new course. Uh, helicopters that cannot refuel. But local law enforcement has to return to base. Uh, I'll draw this. Hey, he's dropping across the beach. As the plane descends in the southwest Guatemala, all the crew can do is watch. He's landing He's on the ground. He's on the ground. That looked like a crash landing. What, what was that? Trucks going up. Within seconds, a fleet of trucks offload the coke and drive off. They're moving, yeah, they're moving, yeah. Where even the P3 can't track them. I am lost in the hunt tree. Uh, could they have stopped at that house? Hard to tell. Despite seven and a half hours of successful tracking, the mission has failed. That's RTB, let's get out of here. Part of the problem with, with us is we can stay out for a good while, we can stay longer than just about anybody else. You run out of good guys. And that's kind of the case tonight. That's it. As the crew return to their secret Central American base... Magenta Line is the road home. Gotcha. Everyone knows where the coke is headed. He's gonna go to Mexico, man, I bet you. The trucks were moving towards Mexico, so... That's definitely where it's going. From Guatemala, the coke is headed to Mexico, into the hands of the cartels. Having got past Peruvian police and U.S. surveillance planes, the coke's value is shot up from $10,000 to $14,000 a kilo. But it's worth twice that in the USA. To get it there, Drug runners have a tunnel running from Tijuana all the way under the border to San Diego. We're actually heading over to uh, a Discover Tunnel. We're gonna get in there and we're actually working into uh, putting the tunnel out of action.
Agent Lenoir's team has uncovered the entrance to a 1,600-foot tunnel hidden inside a warehouse. It's his job to discover what's inside. The noise you hear are air handlers in there. We had to establish our own air ventilation in there to get enough oxygen there so we can actually map this thing and see where it goes. He needs to map the tunnel so it can be demolished. But this tunnel could be deadly. And we're going in. The worst part in there is we're at risk of a collapse. Obviously, running out of air is a critical concern as well. The Sinaloa cartel built this tunnel with little regard for human life. The actual laborers or workers, they're worried about the same thing we are. It's probably a safe assumption that several people have actually perished in the construction of these particular tunnels. To stay alive, Agent Lenoir must rely on his wits and his emergency gas meter. We're always equipped with a four gas meter. It tells us what our oxygen levels are. It also indicates any other dangerous atmosphere conditions we may encounter. The further he gets from the surface. I feel it getting a little bit cooler. Watch your step right here. The less air he has. We're up to 20% oxygen right now. And the further he is from help, if the tunnel collapses, we know that the tunnel is going to collapse. It's just a question of when. Thirty-five feet down, he finally reaches a flat stretch. We're in the guts of the tunnel right now. We got a rail system right here. And there's the cart that they were actually using to push tons of narcotics through. For the Sinaloa cartel, this tunnel was a huge investment in time, money, and resources. All right, we're just now passing the 100-meter mark. As he takes the measurements needed to take down their operation. That'll give us a fairly accurate idea on where the tunnel is in relation to the surface. Agent Lenoir knows he's vulnerable. There's nobody actually guarding the south side. That end is actually vacant. At any moment, he could have company. Agent Lenoir is in a cartel tunnel, getting the coordinates he needs to take it out. The job could kill him if he suffocates. He used up quite a bit of oxygen already. Or gets crushed by a collapse. This might actually be a fault right here. You can see it differs from the more cemented sandstone we have on either side of it. 1,000 feet in, he finally reaches the last stretch of the tunnel under US soil. All right, I'm going to take one last compass reading. We got everything we need inside this tunnel, so we're going to actually travel. Uh, head back north. Agent Lenoir is heading back to safety. But with billions of dollars to be made moving coke across the border, he knows this tunnel won't be his last. Now, officially, there have there been 169 tunnels throughout both our borders. When you have suitable areas in which to tunnel and you have a willingness on somebody to do that work, the threat of tunneling is always going to be there. Voila. Using Agent Lenoir's coordinates, holes are drilled down into the tunnel. Next, concrete will be poured into the shaft. Well, that's it. Nobody goes back in. We're done pretty much with this tunnel. We're going to start filling her up, move on to the next one. This tunnel is out of action, but some of the Peruvian coke got through. From the border, it's trafficked along the notorious I-5 smuggling route to Los Angeles. Having got past cops and customs, 
the coke has shot up in value from $14,000 to $28,000 a kilo. This what you call cocaine money. I would kill a for this life here. Pound Dog is one of LA's biggest dealers, selling cartel coke on a wholesale level. This whole bird right here, working for the cartel. I can go over there and be like, man, I'm gonna just take one kilo on credit today, or, you know, four or five, or 100, damn. Tonight, he's preparing five kilos for a $140,000 deal. Good, and we back in the doors, smoking, shipping. How we do it? If it comes off, he makes thirty grand. And since I'm plugged in with the Mexicans, it's kind of like hitting a lottery. I made in a week half a million, easy. He's certain the buyer will like the product. Peruvian flake. That's that good right there. <laughs> That's what they all want. But he's not so sure he'll like the buyer because he's never met him. I do an exclusive deal with this dude from uh, you know, South, South, you know, come on. Here we go. There's a risk this deal could turn sour, and Pound Dog can't afford to make any mistakes with the cartel's coke. You come back to the Mexicans without that money, it gets ugly, you know? They can't get you, they'll get your mama, get your kids snatched up, get your beat up. Leave it. They will come your all the way up. This a nightmare. For his and the coke safety, Pound Dog counts on his reputation. I can honestly say I've done a lot of to get where I am. But if I want somebody killed, it's best to leave. Your ass is gonna go. You know. With the violence comes fear, and with the fear comes the respect. <laughs> I never. All these Pound Dog's about to find out if he'll need to get violent tonight. What's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, sir. What's up? I'm looking for a solid connect out here, straight up. I got bread here with me, you know what I'm saying? I do my thing. Like, you know what I mean? I do my thing. I get bread, bro. I'm not, you know, no I'm glad I, you know, right, but I'm trying to do some stuff. No man. I'm a legitimate dude, and whatever will work. Yeah. Reassured the guy isn't out to rob him, Pound Dog gets out a sample. My girl does this. I don't f with this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's good? Yeah, A1, A1. You don't like your road trips, man. I'll take them all. The buyer agrees to the deal. Five kilos is on the move. Heading to West Hollywood, a club and party mecca. Here, sold off in grams, the Coke jumps in value from 28000 to its final price of $80,000 a kilo. And one user has just got her Peruvian product. Well, tonight, it's Friday night in Los Angeles, California, in Hollywood. So I say we go out and get It's what we like to do. We like to do it rough and hard. Coco is a coke sniffing club fanatic. I am savior. In the club scene, people use drugs for fun, and you can party longer with cocaine. Everyone does it. Everyone. Coco's bought one bag to see her through the night. A half a gram. So that runs sets me back like 40 bucks. It's investment. I need it. But the coke could cost Coco more than money. Ready to party. Let's get crazy. <sighs> Cocaine can cause heart attacks, brain damage, kidney failure, and sudden death. Tonight, Coco could be risking her life.
Friday night in West Hollywood, and party girl Coco is flirting with danger, snorting Peruvian coke that's traveled 4,500 miles to get to her. Amazing. I love it. And ready to party. Don't hit it. <laughs> As Coco heads out to party, she's on a high. Sexy boys. There's drugs everywhere. There's liquor. There's just a little bit of everything going on. Love it. It's fabulous. And I feel fantastic. But soon her high needs topping up. We're gonna go do a flop because why? Because I need one. It's been over five or six minutes. I'm antsy. I need it. Coco gets her coke out in the middle of the street. Bingo, there she is. She's still there. Now she's not only risking her health, but also her liberty. But all Coco craves is the hit. Mm. Yes. Back on my A game. Let's go have a cocktail. Hit the dance floor. That's what it's all about. On the dance floor, Coco's oblivious to the strain her body is under. Oh, cocaine. Yes. Yes. And death is just one of the dangers. Coco could also get addicted. And it's time to do another bump. I mean, hello, let's bump, 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 bump it up. Slightly bigger one now, because why not? I pretty much control my habit, but there's been times where I've used a little too much. And you're like, God, it's been two days, I've been still partying. And so, I mean, I think everyone slips. Tonight, Coco stops when she's done with her $40 bag. My night was fabulous. I mean, it's LA, hello. This time, she's been lucky. I've, I've lost friends that couldn't handle it, and they can't do it occasionally. It becomes an issue for them that controls their life. So it's not all glitz and glamour. <laughs> On the other side of Hollywood, Homie's got an order from a celebrity addict. All right, well, see that? I just got a text right now from a very high-end platinum hip-hop artist. Now, if you knew this person, you wouldn't believe me. You would say, what the f Homie deals to this rap star all the time. But today, one thing's different. Usually, the way he pays me is he deposits in my bank account, right? With the bank the system, they are not accepting any more deposits from anybody other than the owners of that account. The new banking system's been designed to crack down on dealers like Homie. I went and tried to do that yesterday, and they asked me for my ID. So I walked out of there. But he's already found a way around it. Now we're doing prepaid cards. You can have $100,000 right here, and you get pulled over, and the cops never suspect a goddamn thing. For Homie, the future is looking golden. More and more people are acquiring money. More and more cocaine users are networking with each other. So for me, business is always increasing. Always. Always. Everything glitters, and it's all money, and it's all white gold, y'all.